In this video, we will be going over page 2B of the MDE LCRR service line inventory spreadsheet. And page 2B is titled Connector Information. When you are on this page, you will see the data that were provided on page 2A previously related to overall service line appear automatically on page 2B. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And the data that are carried over from page 2A are under column C through column U. And under these columns, you will see a note under row 4 stating that, uh, these, that these are the data carried over from page 2A and any necessary changes should be made on page 2A. So if you so you'll see that if we try to make changes to the data under these columns, you'll get an error message. So for example, if I try to change the um, PWS assigned unique identification number for each of the service line here, I will get an error message that you cannot uh, make any change. So if you need to make any changes under uh, for under column C uh, through column U, please be sure to navigate to page 2A to make those changes. And for instance, if I want to make this change to new, when you go back to page 2B, you'll see that this one is now changed as well. So let me go back and change this back to what we had before. And now you see uh, we have ABC-01 again. And as mentioned in the previous video, if a cell is highlighted in yellow, it means that the information is required uh, to be provided in that cell. So the water system should look for cells that are blank and highlighted in yellow. Um, in this example, we already see that the cells that are blank and highlighted in yellow are under column B, uh, which is asking for the date of most recent update of data related to service line on this page. And uh, as mentioned in the previous video as well, this column is for water system to indicate the date on which the data was most recently updated. For the initial service line inventory, the date that the water system submit the service line inventory to MDE can be provided under this column. For this video, we'll come back to this column later after we have finished providing all of the required information on this page. We're now going to scroll to the right and we're gonna look for uh, required cells, which are with cell, which are cells that are blank and are highlighted in yellow. And the first one that we encounter here is under column W, which asks if the material of the current connector at location one A is lead, what is the length of the connector? And uh, before I go into too much detail of this column, I wanted to point out that you also see that there are columns to the left and to the right of column W that are hashed out. And this is because these columns are applicable only under uh, inventory update, but not under the initial inventory. So, water system will not need to worry about these hatch out columns on this page when completing the initial inventory. And you'll see that when you're submitting the inventory update in the future, later next, uh, let's say next year, uh, these columns will no longer be hashed out. Okay. Um, in this video, however, we'll focus on the columns that are applicable under the initial inventory and um, this one here that we see highlighted in yellow is applicable. 
So if you scroll further to the right, you'll start seeing some error messages. And again, as mentioned in previous videos, in this uh, inventory spreadsheet, we have columns that may uh, output some errors. This is to help water system navigate and see if they're uh, you know, are still required to provide any missing information. So for example, in column Y here, the error says length of current connector cannot be left blank on page 2B, which is this at uh, the cell here. That's why we are seeing some error messages. So as we uh, will be filling out um, and completing, uh, uh, populating data in these cells, the error message will disappear. Now I'm going to scroll further to the right to see if there are any more cells that we need to worry about. And you can see another one um, under column AA, and then another one column AE, and then another one on column AI. And if we scroll further, that's it. So in on this page, page 2B, you'll see that you'll have four total four columns that you'll need to worry about for each of the service lines. So um, before we can answer these questions though, uh, we let's navigate to Appendix B where we will be able to see what uh, each of these locations mean. So you see that this column mentioned location 1A, if you scroll to the right earlier, um, and maybe I should zoom in a little bit more. Um, you'll see that column AA here is mentioning uh, location 1B. And here we have uh, location 2A. And here we have location 2B. So let's navigate to Appendix B where we can see what these locations mean. And in order to navigate to Appendix B from this uh, inventory spreadsheet, we'll need to scroll through the, the pages at the bottom by cl clicking on this button at the lower uh, left-hand corner of the spreadsheet until you see Appendix A through Appendix G. And here, you'll see Appendix B is titled an example of service line from a water main to a building and possible connector locations. So we'll click here to open the page and the page should be open right now. So I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna scroll to page two of this Appendix B where you'll see uh, possible connector locations. And for the purpose of the service sign inventory, there are four possible locations, uh, which include location 1A, location 1B, location 2A, and location 2B. So location 1A, and I'm gonna scroll down just, uh, actually I'm just gonna, kind of walk you through what each of these location means. So location A is the connector, at, so connector at location 1A is a connector located between the water main and the first portion of the service line. Note, this is the most common location of a connector. Location 1B. A connector at location 1B is the connector located at the end of the first portion of service line. Location 2A is a connector. At, <clears throat> location 2A is the connector located at the beginning of the second portion of the service line. And lastly, location 2B, a connector at location 2B is a connector located between the end of the second portion of service line and the building inlet. Appendix B also provide visualization of these connector locations. So for instance, service lines that are um, under scenario A, 
which is when the entire service line is owned by the same entity. For example, the entire line is owned by the customer. And the service line does not branch or feed into multiple service lines. So as you can see here in the diagram, the uh, there's only one portion of the service line going from water main to the building or the structure. And therefore, location connector location 1A would be located between the water main and the start of the service line and the connector location 1B would be located between the end of the service line and the building inlet. So these are possible connector locations for scenario A service lines that have only one portion. So service lines that are in scenario C Right. So if you scroll a little bit more to page three of appendix B, there are a few more diagrams that shows uh, some possible locations of connector. And we're just going to look at the first one here. So service lines are scenario C is when there is split in ownership indicated by the red line, dotted line here. And it's split into two portions, and each portion is owned by different entity. For example, the first portion is owned by the water system, and the second portion is owned by the customer. And uh, for scenario C, the service line does not branch or feed into multiple service line. So it goes from first portion to second portion. So connector location 1A would be um, where the connector is located between the water main and the start of the first portion of the service line. Location 1B would be where a connector is located at the end of the first portion of the service line. Location 2A would be located at the start of the second portion of the service line. And lastly, connector location 2B is located between the end of the second portion of the service line and the building inlet. Now, you may not have connectors at any of these locations, or you, know, you may have uh, connectors at only one of the locations. The spreadsheet will have a place for you to provide um, the information related to the connectors for each of these locations, but let's say if you do not have any connectors uh, located in any of these locations, then you can also indicate that on the spreadsheet. So now that we know, you know what each of the possible locations uh, for the connectors are, let's go back to the service line inventory spreadsheet. And uh, since we are on the page that has the appendices, we're going to navigate back to page 2B, which actually is right here. So we're going to click on that. So <clears throat> let's start at location 1A, which is column W here. So under this column, water system will have uh, multiple options to choose from. And again, this column is asking, if the material of the current connector at location 1A is lead, what is the length of the connector? Right. And again, we didn't, I didn't mention this earlier, but the connector includes gooseneck and pigtail. So if, for example, water system knows that there is a connector at this location, location 1A, however, is not lead, then the water system should choose uh, the option that says length not applicable, connector not lead. And as soon as you make a uh, selection, you'll see that the error message on column Y disappeared and now changed to uh, match the 
uh, the selection that we have just uh, chosen from the drop down option. It's a little bit written differently, but it means the same thing. For, so here it says non lit connector, right? So uh, now, if, for example, uh, for the next service line, ABC02, earlier we just did for ABC01 service line, let's say at ABC02, your water system said that, you know, we know that there's no connector at this location, at location 1A, then the option uh, length not applicable, no connector present should be selected. And here again, the status um, of the connector at this location is now said no connector, right? So that, and let's say if the, uh, instead of knowing whether or not the connector is, exists, the, or whether or not, um, if you, even if water system knows that the connector exists, but they might not know the material of the connector, then water system can select connector material and or presence of connector unknown. So let's say, uh, as an example, water system actually knows that there's a connector uh, uh, that there's a lead connector at this location, then what we ask water system to do is to select the length that is most applicable to the, the connector that is at this location for the service line, right, that the water system is filling out the information for. So for example, if the lead connector is less than one feet, then they should choose this option and let's say if it's equal to two feet, right, then they should choose this option. And in a situation where water system knows that there's a light connector, but they do not have information related to the length, water system will also have the option of lead connector length unknown. So then uh, once the water system finished filling up, uh, filling out this column, again, there was, you will see no errors, but for the ones that are blank, you will definitely see uh, some errors here, right? So now let's scroll to the right and we'll do the same thing. So now we're gonna look at location 1B. And again, location 1B would be at the end of the first portion, right? So service sign, which can be located different location uh, depending on the scenarios that you have. So let's say then we're going to say, okay, we don't know whether or not there's a connector at this location. That's all we have to say. And so for this one, you'll see that there's a hatch out cell for ABCO2 but it's required for ABC01. And that's because for ABC02, in previous video, we indicate that this service line is under scenario A, which means there's only one portion of service line. So if you look at the diagram here, right, from appendix B, for scenario A, there's no location 2A or 2B. There's only location 1A and 1B. Only when you have two portions of service line that you would have location 2A and location 2B. And that's why the spreadsheet automatically hashed out the cell for ABCO2, right? That means water system will not have to worry about it. And actually, if you look at the auto-generated uh, cells here for uh, ABCO2, you see that connector on second portion does not exist because second portion uh, of service line does not exist, i.e. scenario A. So what we have to do here is make selection for other ones that have 
you know, uh, yellow highlighted cells that are blank. So for this example, we'll just say, again, we don't know whether or not the connector is there. All right, the same thing for location 2B. We're gonna say we don't know. After your water system completes all of the required information on this page, you see that there will be no error messages on any of these uh, auto-generated uh, columns. In comparison, we have not finished AVC03, right? So there are uh, red colored text which with error messages say that, oh, you cannot leave um, the length of the connector blank even if you don't know the material or don't know the whether or not a connector actually exists. So for the ones that we have completed, there's no more errors. And so let's say that we have actually completed, um, I'm not, in this video, I'm not gonna go through and completing uh, all the rows uh, due to time constraint, but let's uh, say that we have completed all of the required cells um, for all of the service line in this uh, on this page. What we'll have to do now is make sure that we now provide the date um, under column B. So again, as mentioned earlier, the, uh, the date right, that uh, we can provide here can be the date on which the data was actually input, um, you know, if you want to keep track of it that way, or it can be the date that the water system submits the service line inventory to MDE. So as an example, I'm going to say that I'll be submitting the inventory to MDE on October 16, 2024. So I'll put 10 slash 16 slash 2024 for all of the, uh, for all of these uh, rows, right? I'm going to quickly copy paste data here. And again, um, if you would like to know how we copy and paste data on uh, within the spreadsheet um, from uh, other sources, please be sure to navigate to Appendix F. And again, you can navigate to Appendix F from the spreadsheet. So um, again, the data that water system will need to provide on this page, which is page 2B, connect their information. Well, for the initial inventory, there will only be four columns for each of the service line. So four columns, um, one for each of the location, right? Location 1A, location 1B, location 2A, and location to B. And um, once this page is complete, then water system can proceed to page three of MDE LCRR service line inventory spreadsheet. And uh, this is the end of this video for page 2B of the MDE LCRR service line inventory spreadsheet related to connector information. Thank you.